Julie Wanderlim. I am a Filipino-American artist. I've been away for a long time and I don't really keep up with what's going on in the internet. I live in the southern part of the Philippines. Small city that is very near the river and the, the, the ocean. I knew as a child I I had an inkling that I was created because uh, I would do things that uh, ordinarily uh, other kids won't do. I would imagine how to solve certain problems if I didn't have uh, something that I needed. I would try to produce it by doing something to have what I want. <laughs> you know, during our time, kids didn't have as many toys as they, as kids now. They are inundated with all kinds of material things and we didn't really have toys. I figured out a way to, my, to make my own doll by using you know, scraps of uh, fabric. I figure out I can make the, the hair by removing one side of the fabric and I put it on the other uh, doll that I made. <laughs> and many other little things that I did and I think uh, that's how I became an artist. It was not really a time that you discover that you're suddenly an artist. I think it's in you. I went to the University of the Philippines and uh, finished a degree in fine arts. Realized that, you know, this is the path I'm going to take. I grew up in the Philippines, but I have stayed in the United States for almost 35 years. And uh, through the years, I have found many different ways of working. I have more than four different kinds of styles. It reflects my nature because I, I am often challenged by so many different materials and subject matter and I want not to be stuck with just one style of working. So I work in representational style as well as abstract uh, styles and I do fabric collages like this and and I also make prints. I do landscapes, I do um, market scenes and uh, you know I just jump from one subject to another and one uh, technique to another because that's just my nature. When I decide to do a subject or any piece in fabric I just you know eliminate other materials. I said I'm going to do this in fabric and yarn and other related materials. You know, I didn't think of painting when I do my, uh, my fabric art. Sewing them over the machine zillions of times creates a certain kind of texture and vibrancy to the whole piece. Very, you know, colorful. I think it reflects my upbringing and the place I grew up in because the tropics just have such vibrant colors. And because I live near the sea, I am taken by the colors of the coral reefs, animals in the sea, because I think they have colors that are even much more vibrant than you know animals or plants that are on land. <laughs> yeah, and I think because I like motion and movement in my pieces, you know, I don't like very static uh, pieces. I'm not a minimalist at all. I want to have a lot of movements and dynamism within my compositions. The aesthetic sense is always there, you know. All art artists have to grapple with problems of composition, problems of design and problems of, of uh, unifying materials with your design. If I do the abstract works, I tend to do it very spontaneously. I don't have any preconceived notion about the composition. I just gather all my fabrics and cut them up with my scissors and compose as I go along. Ideas come up. I am very playful when I do those smaller collages, but when I do this, these are more serious uh, topics. You know, I tend to be more disciplined because they're about uh, 
environmental topics and I want to stick to the idea of the peace. The one entitled No More Swinging, it's the big piece with the orangutan. Um, this piece was inspired by the story of a, an Indonesian hunter who went uh, hunting on a deforested area somewhere in Indonesia. He was hunting for monkeys or, or apes. When he saw a gibbon, he shot it, it fell. And when he went to recover the animal, he realized that it was a mother gibbon and beside her was her baby. And when he went closer, he realized that the animal was crying. He saw tears going down her cheeks. And later on, the mother handed over the baby to him to take care of the baby as she was dying. So after that incident, the hunter stopped hunting. This is a very touching story and I couldn't forget it. But instead of a gibbon, I made an orangutan baby because I think I, I like the color of the orangutan. <laughs> I am especially concerned about the conditions of the coral reefs in the world because it's, it's reported that only about 60% of the coral reefs in the oceans are alive. 40% has been decimated and in the, the Philippines is what has one of the best uh, coral reef sites in the world and many of them are dying. This one is by acid rain. And the other one is by bleaching through pollution. This one, that's why the title of that piece is called Bleaching. And this one is another piece that I made to illustrate the problem of uh, shark killing. Sharks have been harvested for their fins. You know, they remove the fins and throw away the bodies of the shark to the ocean. It's actually a mutilation. To meet the demands for dried shark fins, they don't make use of the body. They just want to make use of the fins. So they return them to the ocean and they die, of course. The one entitled Hawaiian Worker is the story of uh, thousands of Filipino workers who were recruited to work in the sugar and pineapple plantations in Hawaii because during this time there was a ban on Chinese uh, immigration. So they had to recruit workers from the Philippines because that was the time when America colonized the country. And when they were in the plantation, they were uh, working in very hard and harsh conditions. And there was a social hierarchy. On top were the Portuguese uh, taskmasters. They were the supervisors. And underneath were the Japanese workers who were paid higher than the Filipinos. So one part of the painting has a totem pole image and I put the Filipinos down below. <laughs> so that's the story of that <laughs> painting. I don't think a lot of people really know the connection between uh, the United States and the Philippines. especially its colonial past and the influences America has had on the Philippine Islands. The one that has the baby is entitled Roses for Nani and uh, Nanai. It shows a, a Filipina taking care of a white child while her own child is being taken care of by the grandparent because it's the only way they can support the family. So that's uh, my uh, tribute to the Filipino overseas worker.
It is a reflection of the conditions of many Filipino mothers who have gone abroad to work as uh, domestic helpers, housekeepers, and other, uh, you know, manual labor. This past few decades has been the greatest diaspora of Filipinos all over the world. Filipinos are very, what you call, sociable and very gregarious. Not exactly me, because I tend to be <laughs> introverted. But uh, Filipinos are very sociable and very open. I think it's part of the Latin American uh, heritage that we got from Mexico. Because uh, there was a very vigorous uh, galleon trade between Acapulco and Manila during the time of the Spanish uh, colonization. See, that's how a lot of Spanish uh, influences of Mexican uh, and Mexican cultural artifacts also came to the Philippines, especially in agriculture. You know, many plants that are from South America were exported to the Philippines. My compositions, my paintings reflect the very vibrant kind of personality of Filipinos, you know. In spite of the poverty and misery and suffering, you will find Filipinos looking very happy. They keep on smiling and, you know, laughing and actually laughing at themselves. <laughs> I think that's one way of coping with all the problems. <laughs> yeah, I miss uh, being in the province and being near the rivers and oceans and forests. I really love to be in the outdoors. And enjoy the oceans while it's still alive and uh, teeming with life so that we will be motivated to help preserve the oceans.